गुड इवनिंग एंड वेलकम टू गन शॉट गन शॉट में आप सबका स्वागत है टुडे वी गोन समथिंग इंपॉर्टेंट एज हैपन एंड वी गोन टू टॉक अबाउट इट वी गोन टॉक अबाउट द चाइनीज स्टेप बैक ऑन द एल एसी राइट एंड टू डिस्कस दिस इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक विद मी आई हैव जनरल राजीव नारायणन एज यूशुअल माई मेट हु डील्स चाइना इन डिटेल गुड इवनिंग राजीव वेलकम Thank yeah. you. Welcome, surprise. Good to be on your show, sir. Good to be. Not yeah. For me, but welcome, surprise from Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping, yeah. Uh, great surprise Xi Jinping has given us. Uh, let us see where this goes. But let's start at the beginning with what happened today, right? And and I think from there we'll uh, talk of this entire thing. Uh, yeah. So, one minute. right now to start with today the foreign secretary he came and spoke and this is what he spoke right let me oh one minute huh? for some reason anyway his uh, thing is not coming but we know what he has said uh, he has said that the uh, you know uh, there the lot of uh, what shall i say parleys have taken back uh, taken on between india and china and some accommodation has been reached uh, there is going to be uh, you know petroleum is going to restart and further negotiations and further steps will start right not much details are on uh and presumably uh presumably and what come out in the print they say that uh, you know generally something uh, they have spoken about debt sang and all that things uh, are clear uh we don't know the full details uh, so that's the you know sketchy sketchy thing uh you have any thing to add on this particular thing we'll uh, talk about what's come out and about. what's come out and then we'll talk ahead demchok is also they are talking about these two areas yeah. but uh, finer points is not yet known how much of petroling all they have said is petroling will restart but yeah. uh, when what till which point what all has been done nothing has all those have not come out not there and the other side has not yet made any statement yeah uh, the state has not made it made so before we both of us uh, you know go into the details of what's happened and what uh, we have to tell you i'd like to make a few issues uh, this step is significant it's very significant and i consider it also a positive step right but it was a high risk step also there are risks involved in this entire story which has happened so far right uh, but we're going to do this analysis with the details which are available with us we are not going to go speculate what can happen ahead we're going to face put some facts in front of you and as the story unfolds in as days to come we'll keep opening our analysis okay the real status will we'll know only when the details are given and also when china puts out a statement so far china has not put out a statement whatever has happened here or whatever is likely to happen is not a solution to the india china border issue it's only a small step right and the way i look at it the first step we need to understand this is a tactical adjustment as far as china is concerned what is the tactical adjustment jal narayanan will fully explain to you okay we also have to keep in mind there's a brics meet coming up is this an accommodation for you know to enable xi jinping and prime minister modi to speak during the brics meet uh, what is russia's hand in it okay uh, it, because it appears it has played a hand uh, then there's also talk of chinese fdi coming into this area you know into india there's been a debate of this ever since our budget session was on 
then what will be the impact on us and what will be the impact on the strategic relationship with the us and then we it's open secret that russia wants the rsc to be revived so there are a whole lot of issues we'll talk of all of them and uh, we'll we'll take it step by step right this is i what i thought we will present to you we'll give you the exact details of what's uh, the current status in uh, depson and demchok and then we'll give you an analysis of the other issue of the prc and then we'll tackle a few issues uh, this is my opening thinking uh your, your turn rajiv you will say yes, and then i will give very much while uh, what i entirely agree with what you say i will add further that uh, economically and uh, militarily china at the moment is at its weakest yes so they need to get some time some leave it so would this be also as part of their overall strategy like you correctly pointed out that this is just a tactical step a small tactical step not doesn't resolve our uh, issues along the lsc yeah but uh, having said all this uh, those of you who have been watching us we've always been analyzing china in its actuality and what the problems it has been facing and we've always maintained at some point of time or the other for, over the past 3 years that the day will come when china will have to go back okay this might be just the start point of the whole story we don't know what's going to unfold but right so the first thing i'd like to tell everyone is why this whole story is significant is i will start from there and i'll explain to you the whole uh, thing the terrain part of it with some maps so that you have a better understanding of the whole thing and then we will go into the analysis okay Just let's get on to the will, map yeah 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 please go ahead i'll add like you said you we had been discussing at some point they'll withdraw we know for sure that xi jinping it appears his wings are being clipped clipped and i'll highlight the power struggles within the pla is this as part of his overall strategy to clip his wings further because he has always been against any pullback because it is loss yeah. of face it was his decision to do it yeah uh okay sorry now have a look at this map which is in front of you okay i put it up this is the map which existed in 2020 please understand in 2020 april may 2020 what was the situation the situation was there was an incursion at depsang there was an incursion at hot springs and gogra there was an incursion at pangongso there was an incursion at demchok the limpyudara issue with nepal was at its peak and there was also an attempted in- incursion in sikkim at nakula all the others got sorted out and for the first time in pangong so chinese had to take a step back when they went back 9 kilometers they had to break their own defenses and go back 9 kilometers but they held on to depsang and demchok so far and today the news is they have to step back right because they had come far ahead and they have to step back and allow re patrolling how far that patrolling will be and all that is to be seen but remember this is a step back that is why the heading chinese step back on the lsc okay now have a look at this map again right what do you see you see the road from you know north coming down to lhasa from lhasa this road pass shigatse and going in front of the entire western sector as you see the pointer going is the western express highway or the western highway or popularly known as the g 219 the g219 goes across a complete himalayan belt in front of us goes across nepal it grows across the central sector and cuts through opposite you know from demchok to depsang and that cuts through the you know uh it cuts through the it cuts through the 
Aksai chain area and goes on to the north. Okay. And this 219 will play an important part as we go along. Okay. Now, this is the map. If you remember, you see this is a map which you can see anywhere. The LAC, uh, the Aksai chain area, what has been occupied, where is Depsang and where is Demchok. We are going to talk of Depsang and Demchok today. Let's have no doubt about it. Both these we will, uh, you know, talk of. Okay. Now, this is a broad map which I thought I'll put in front of all of you. You see Karakoram Pass, DBO is Dalak Bay Goldie, Depsang Plains in the north, Sushul in the south, and Demchok in the southernmost area. Now, this is the border, right? This is the border. The entire area, Depsang up to the border, is what we know as Aksai Chin. Now, this is the LAC. This is the approximate alignment of the LAC. It's not the exact LAC. Just to give you an idea. So nothing is you know, absolutely pinpoint here because these are sketches I made in the afternoon. And this is that road, G219, which comes right from in front of Nepal and goes into uh, you know, Xinjiang. And this is this road, Darbuk, Shiok, uh, Dalit Bay Goldi, which goes from, start from Tangse, Darbuk goes along the Shiok to DBO. And this is what has put the heebie-jeebies in them. Because with this, from DBO, they perceive something can come and cut off the road from the north. We'll explain this to you a little later. Now look at this map. Okay, very important. That red one, this red line is the, you know, G219. This is Depsan, what you see. This is the Aksai chain area. And this is the Sasar range. This is the Shok River. This is the Indus River, and this is the range called Changchenmo Range. Now, from anywhere on this road along the Shok River, you can't go across the Changchenmo River in great you know, strength and cut off this road, road and all that. But Depsang, you can. And that is why Depsang is important. The Depsang Plain is connected to the Aksai Chin. And just where the Changchenmo finishes is where this intrusion has taken place and where they've been sitting for the past four years. Okay. Now, this map is very critical. This was prepared by, uh, I don't know who prepared it, but General Panag has uh, you know, published this in an article. And that link to the article I put on the top, Sanjay, sanjmorcha.com. And General Panag knows the terrain well because he commanded his battalion here. Now, if you look at it, now, this is the our perceived LAC. Okay. Now, all these points are in small form, but I'll go into it. This is Karakoram Pass. This is DBO. Okay. This is the DBO area road coming down. Okay. This is called Bootsay. We'll come to this Bootsay again. Now, if you see, this is the Depsang area. Okay, and this is the Chinese post opposite Depsang. They have not intruded here. Okay, they have not intruded here. They have intruded here. Why? Because they have a post here, so they feel they can hold us here. But from here, they have problems. And these are the patrolling points here. These are the three, four patrolling points which are here in black. In leisure, I will look at this map in detail. Right. And you, we used to do patrolling till these points here. But now they don't allow us. Why? Okay, here. Yeah. Because this is the bottleneck area. This is where the Chinese are sitting. Okay? Right. And there's another point here which I want to highlight. This. This is called Y Junction. There were times when they came to Y Junction and stopped us going north towards the south. And allowed, didn't allow us to do patrolling. Now, the moot point is though uh, the foreign secretary has said patrolling will be allowed and normal patrolling will resume, will patrolling resume from this, you know, uh, what's that, bottleneck to the Y junction or bottleneck up to the old, all PPs is a moot question for which we need details. We have not got details so far. Okay. Now, 
okay, this is the uh, bottleneck, this is Y junction, this is our petrol days. Now, if you see this map, these red lines are the Chinese roads in this area. Alternately, if you go from the uh, Dalak Bay Goldie, you can go up to this road in the depth. Whereas in the south, you can't. But in the south, you can go along this road, which is in the south. Okay? To, through this Jivan Nala and PP12 and hit this road. So that's the importance of this area. Because if you get onto this Changchun Morange and control the important part, sure, China is at risk. And they are not very clear. They are not very keen that we do patrolling up to the points where they can get cut off. That's the root mood point of this whole story. Okay. Now, this is a satellite image of the PLA camp as taken by a Pakistani. This appeared in a Pakistani uh, journal. Okay. I've just taken that. But I don't know how good or bad this thing is. But what is important is I, the coordinates of the block were given in this. When I went and searched this, this is what I got. And this is the Chinese camp at that blocking point. Okay, the roads come from the east from here and go a little ahead and stop. This is that. Now let me zoom out. If you zoom out, this is the blocking point and this is where we have to come up, go past. We used to go along this Nala and then this Nala goes to the north which is called the Raki Nala, and this is the Jeevan Nala, which goes to the south, to various uh, patrolling points, right up to those roads which I showed you in the previous map. Okay, this is the further, uh, you know, enlargement. You see this place, Budse Camp. This is our patrol base. This is where somewhere our patrol base is. So normally we have to go till here. I, I'm, I'm not very clear till how far you go by foot, how far you go by road, because... It's been quite some time since I've been there. In fact, I've, to be very honest, I've not been to that bottleneck area. I've also not been to Bootsy per personally, but I've flown over it. I know the area. Okay. So from here, and these people can approach this bottleneck area by road. That's the difference. They can stay there by road, whereas we have to do everything by foot. Okay. Now, if you, I zoom out even further, you see, this is the bottleneck area. Again, the red point and the thing is the uh, bottleneck area. And this is the line of our you know, DSDB road. And if you see these, this is the area of their uh, road G219, which is very important for them, which I've been telling for a long time. Okay, now let's get to them chalk. So the sum total of what the, what the story here is, are we going to get patrolling rights up to the LAC or not. So that's the step we'll have to see till where we are going to get patrolling rights or not. If you're not going to get patrolling rights up to PP15 AO, then there is there are issues involved. But then we don't know the details. Let's get the details and we'll... Uh, but like I said, it's a positive step that something is happening. Okay. Now, let's get to this Demchok area. Now, this is Demchok, and right, and this road is that same G219. Very important road for the Chinese. Let me tell you at the outset if you cut this road off at two, three places, China is over in this area. That's why they're, it, they're so sensitive to it. This is the actual international boundary, which they have uh, don't agree, and all that. We know that. Now, see the distance between the Demchok and this road. It's the closest to India. It gives tremendous options. More than that, I'll not talk. Now, what's the story here? This is the LAC. Okay? And this is where they've encroached still. And this is the Indus River, which comes from Mansarovar and comes north and goes further. Okay, they're sitting here. Now, I'm going to tilt this map 90 degrees and show it to you in a north-south direction so that you understand the problem. Have a look at this. Just orient, you know, when you, uh, the, just orient yourself to this map. If you see the black line on this map is the IB, as per this thing. This is Demchok, 
And now this is a place called Chardingla. I'll come to the Chardingla a little later. See, concentrate on Demchak. And south of that is Indus. That valley which comes down, this is the Indus River, which comes from Mansarovar and enters India and keeps flowing. Okay. Now, as far as this is concerned, this line, this dotted line which I put now, is the LAC. Okay. This is important. They just pushed us back a little, and I'll tell you why. Okay, now I've shown this as a three-dimensional map. Same Indus River, same Demchok, same Chardingla. Now look at this. The LAC is this line from Chardingla, the Nala which comes down to Demchok. You know, actually, here, uh, there's... Let me see where you... Okay, sorry. I'll, I, I just, yeah, one minute. Yeah, have a look at this. See this place? In this area where I'm showing my pointer, there are hot springs there, beautiful hot springs. I've actually gone and had a bath there, long back, of course, before all this nonsense took place. Okay, now as you go further to the north, okay, this charting law. So we used to do patrolling right up to this charting law. But now we can't. The question is, will we be, will this patrolling be allowed? And why we need this patrolling, I'll just show to you. You see Chardingla here? This is a small, with my pointer. This is Demchok. And you see this road. This is that road. You can actually see this road from Chardingla. And what's more, this is Mansarovar. And from Chardingla, you can see Mansarovar. That's the importance of Chardingla. Okay. And this is the road, the G219. It's, I said it starts in front of Nepal from, you know, Lhasa, Shigatse, in front of Nepal. And it keeps following right in front of the complete central sector. And then onto this and further to the north, it goes cuts through Aksai Chin and goes through. This is their lifeline. This is the line with, this is this lifeline which connects Tibet with Xinjiang. If this is cut out, Xinjiang is cut off. So there are serious repercussions. This is the view from Chardingla. Look at this view. Okay, let me explain. Oh, sorry. Let me explain this. This is standing on top of Chartingla. This is from the Google Earth. What is this red, these lines? This is the G219. You can see this line right from far. You can see Mansur over here. On a clear day from Chartingla, you can see up to Mansur over. And you can see a complete Himalayan ridge line here. If you go to the Google Earth and search, you can see Gangotri, Yamunotri, Darchula, all these places are marked. You see the entire central sector. So whatever China does here can be seen from here. It's such a dominating position. And if you turn to the north, also you see a lot of things. So this is very critical for us. So the point is, are we being given patrolling rights up to this point? Uh, that's the point which we have to see. Now, uh, before I get to, this is what uh, General Rajiv Narayanan's analysis is all about. But before that, I'd like Rajiv to give your initial thoughts about all this terrain and uh, what, all, what all we have spoken so far. Give your thoughts and your critique. I mean, you can critique me also, there's no problem. And then we'll go with your analysis. Basically, before anything, I'll just let the viewers know what is this alphabet G. Chinese National Highway is called Godao. Mm. That's oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell that. Or yeah. a highway is known in Mandarin as Gonglu, but a Chinese National Highway which they make is Godao. So that is how the word alphabet G has come. Like we say NH7. He says G219. So that is the background to G so that 
you are clear that that's a national highway so it's a very important thing it's not some state or rural highway that's a national highway that's point number 1 point number 2 general shankar has explained to you very clearly the relevance of the important points of demchok and uh, depsa chardingla once you have seen that you know the kind of domination you get that complete kailash range is you dominate the complete kailash range and that goes right up to kailash mansar that's how the name kailash range if you look at depsang if you got control of chanchengmo and the connected ridges along you observe the complete aksai chin plains that becomes the criticality and the reason why he keeps coming there and he is very worried about your bsdb road that gives you a movement to swing through the plains area of depsang and like uh, jain shankar had given you that road link from dbo it goes straight and hits his g219 so if you concentrate forces there you will go straight to g219 so he is doing it for his defensive battle we have to look at from our uh, defensive perspective and that is the reason why he was mentioning that uh, we have to await the details which uh, most of the people who have written one or two articles on this they say that further discussions will take place on the finer points yeah of that. what i am going to look at is why now one of course jal shankar had mentioned about the bricks he'll talk about it later i will just made a small presentation sort of a thing uh, i'll talk you through the like guy had mentioned earlier also that at the moment economically and militarily china is at its weakest that doesn't mean it's going to stay weak for long and in earlier talks also i have been mentioning you just have a decade and a half to two decades window if you get your house in order if you get your act in order and get your act in place well and good otherwise you have missed the bus you missed the bus so that is the criticality of this window these windows in geopolitics don't last very long someone else will and they don't come very easily uh, and they, they don't, don't come, come very easily also yes this is once in a century or two centuries that you got this window back again you were at one time doing very well and then for over a, nearly a 800 years you have been down now you got a window and it's for you to decide to choose how to use this bit can we go to the next slides why i don't trust the dragon this is as of july 18 2013 and it has been quoted by the chinese also this comes in the chinese language newspaper not in the english language and they've spoken about the six wars that china is sure to fight though they have given a timeline whether they will be able to follow that timeline i doubt it but it gives you the prioritization and the criticality of what they are doing and why they are doing you are at number 3 don't go by the timeline you are at number 3 in the priority at the moment priority 1 and 2 that means the priority today for him is the eastern seaboard taiwan and spratly is come in the eastern seaboard spratly to le liya usne so now taiwan hai spratly to generally the work is done it's done and yeah, finished you are only doing fornox and other things otherwise it's done and dusty taiwan is a uh, one left after that he goes back to the eastern seaboard for the japanese islands dayu that is senkaku that he wants to take after that he will go for taking over the whole of mongolia and these by the way are based on the assessment given by sun yatsen as far back as 1921 22 that unless you do these things you will not be strong you get depth to your han heartland and then he talks about taking back lands lost to russia which is going beyond uh, manchuria shenyang and taking over the far east area 
Vladivostok and all those areas. Uh, that comes subsequently. Uh, surprisingly, he has only used the word Southern Tibet. He has not included Eastern Ladakh. Which, but his focus is there. His focus is there and not as much on uh, Southern Tibet. But be that as is may, while he is talking of Southern Tibet, I look at it at both places that not only Arunachal is very keen on Ladakh also. Why Ladakh? At one point in time, uh, there was a, a Tibetan prince who came to Ladakh and established his kingdom. Long, long ago, many, 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 many centuries ago. So that's how they are working. So this is there and this is taught. And so since 2013, it has been there as far as their teaching within the PLA is concerned, the hierarchy. So next one. Yeah. So Main is we should be very aware of PRC strategies and deception. Deception is the lifeblood of PRC's survival and it has used it since the formation of CPC. Look at how they made a fool of the US and the West by taking money from them. And the West foolishly thought that, okay, we make them rich, they'll become democratic and they'll be like, <laughs> what is that? Yeah. 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 What and I, in fact, we have to look out for the deception in this whole deal. Yes, yes, yes. That's why I'm bringing this out. And I'll yeah. explain to you also. Sun Tzu's Art of War, and there is another uh, compilation of 36 stratagems. They give many insights into the thinking. Now, after PRC was formed, Mao had got together all these ancient teachings and strategies compiled into 21 books. This I am taking from the 100-year marathon. Michael Pillsbury has written in detail about it. Since those days, he was the good boy. Since he was fighting for uh, PRC, they let him read all those books. He fluent in Mandarin. These have not been translated into English. And they are taught from the schools. So this strategy of deception and how to use and deceive and stratagem it is ingrained in their DNA since childhood. And 50 se ye padaya ja hai, so be aware and beware. Next. So, the next slide, sir. Yes. Now, the 36 stratagems you can Google. There are about uh, six strategies of uh, six chapters of six strategies each okay and you have uh, when you're weak when you're equal and when you're strong so that is the three parts how do you defend and how do you uh, overcome so total six strategies each so it takes you to 36 stratagems these are adjunct to the art of war they are addendum to the art of war it's not separate in itself so I have given the chapters within which they have given winning stratagem. Make a sound in the east and strike in the west. So that is the worry. Looking at Taiwan, will he attack across the LSE? Is this part of that? That you say, oh, 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 oh we've got to deal with them. So he's not interested in them. And make the government and the MEA put their guard down even as the army is screaming. And he attacks you. So when you deceive... Look at how the Egyptians deceived the <coughs> Israelis in the Yom Kippur War on the Barlev line. They kept exercising, came in, coming up to the bar, close to the Barlev line and going back. 27 times they did that. And on the day of the Yom Kippur, the guard was down. Oh, they are come up for exercise. So they'll do yeah. that and they'll go back. They didn't do that. Same thing what back. happened on October 7th. Okay. Same and thing happened on October 7th also. And they went across the Barlev line. That is all stratagems. Create something from nothing. Then when you try to make Bharat believe us, believe that it is in their interest to mend relations to PRC. They are funding various, their own people out here to start writing articles. People are speaking, but we must take FDI from 
China, more about it a little later. I'll explain my concerns about it from a book that I have read. It's a wonderful book. I will ask you all to read. And hide a knife behind a smile. What is he hiding? Why is he selling, pulling back? Yes, there have been casualties, high altitude casualties. People are screaming against Xi Jinping. Why have you gone there? There is an internal struggle. Last year, I believe they have about 50, 55 or high altitude casualties. So people have died. People have died. 55 people have, died. have died. So there must be many more who have got hapo. Is there a concern? But despite that, he's been standing firm. Why now suddenly? Is he trying to ingratiate uh, himself with you? Gain your trust and then hit you? Let us be very clear. We are his enemy. Because uh, in uh, he Mao uses Chiang Kai-shek's words that they can't be two sons in the universe. So we have to be very clear that in Asia, it's only going to be him. So whatever he is going to do with you, uh, he is looking at how to uh, keep a buffer till he regains some economic and uh, military strength. Okay. Next. In chapter 2, there is another one. Sacrifice the plum tree to preserve the peach tree. Is he doing this outreach to gain long-term comprehensive national power is at its weakest? Is he using this a tactical move at the, like we've always said, the uh, LAC, whatever happens is tactical, but it has strategic implications. So is the strategic implication that you he will be you will give him time of respite to gain his CNP. That a short term objective he is surrendering for a long term gain. Yeah, and he, he could be disengaging, disengaging troops from the LAC and using them for the Western Front, the uh, Eastern Front. You see? So, and since he has uh, repaired damage with you, he feels that now when he looks at Western Front, you will not do anything for the Americans and the others, uh, the squad on the Eastern Front. The attacking another thing, like Chapter 3 is tossing out a brick to get a jade gem. That he will, you will think that he is going to help you in Atmanirbhar program, but he will capture your market slowly. I'll speak about that a little later. How? Because there is already chatter of getting FDI, Chinese money. You've got to be very careful. There are no free lunches. <laughs> You've got to be careful. Yeah, and uh, here I would like to add, some of our industrialists are pretty greedy. They need money, they need iman to be less. They're saying that they're saying that. See, sir, okay. if he was... I will add to that, sir. If he was so clear in his heart that he wants to do good, well with India, every year he holds a South Asia event forum. Nobody from, call us. Even from the embassy is called. But concurrent with that, there is a South Asia fair where he calls up business people. Yeah. That is where he subverts their mind. Correct. Poisons them against the government. Look, your government is a fool, is not doing this, is not doing that. I can help you do so much. This is that tossing out a brick to get a yeah. jade. I, I completely agree with you. And I see that being played out uh, 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 day in and day out. In fact, Sri Parna Patak has also written a beautiful article on this. Right? This very topic which you said, where there's a huge charm offensive to and come enter your market and revive his no, market. He's yeah. not giving you no, entry into his markets. Okay. He wants but, to come right? into your market. Yeah, and he is not able to also put his FDI in any other market. Yes. He is also not getting FDI from others. Others. So there's a moot the, question we have to ask. The when other he wants question. FDI. Has, no, you know, 
yeah when he wants fdi from other markets why are you taking from china why can't you get fdi directly from others i mean there is something i have not understood see the other issue is sir he is given strict instructions to byd that is not going to share and make anything in india or turkey also he has added correct india and turkey then what yes. is akman nirbhar tha you are telling that byd that everything has to be here the rnd also has to be here it has to be made, made for indian design he is clearly given an instruction to them and no businessman in china is going to violate the party's order correct right so there no doubt so we have to be very 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 careful i'll come to that i'll explain it with a book from my red like i said next so when i look at the external scan he is aggressive in indo china sea but he is scared because his, we had done a series on can he fight a amphibious battle and we had come out that it's going to be very difficult for him yet he has become aggressive south asia is losing out because bangladesh he is lost out if he is doing a deal with me that means he is throwing pakistan under the bus will he throw his cat for under the bus is he throwing him under the bus if he is doing a deal with you no he wants to he wants to put up his first overseas command in gwadar yes his first overseas theater command he wants to put it in gwadar so if he is doing that and despite all the problems in gwadar all the problems in baluchistan all the problems in pakistan he is not letting pakistan go he didn't let pakistan go in the seo meet also yes so if he is not doing yes. that Then so why is he coming to you? Will you will he give? No, no. Is he giving Pakistan some breathing space through this? That would be the uh, something, sir. Because Pakistan has a major problem on his west. West he gets a breathing space to the east, and uh, then so the next one, sir. Yeah. Oh, sorry. U.S. The USA, we know. He is in doldrums with them. West Asia, he tried to make it, but today is. I don't think after October seventh, people trust China because so much of Chinese footprints have been found in Gaza itself. Iran itself is on the back foot now, so he doesn't know what will happen. We don't know what kind of response now. Next response, the next. <coughs> they launched a big cyber attack. The Israelis. What's the next step? that is going they are going to take to iran we don't know we are only speculating it whatever they do what is where is china going to be then russia is a big question mark because he suddenly finds that the russia india equation is becoming stronger africa today slowly the voices are coming out against china it's not that all of them have gone against china but the voices are now rising because of two things a the debt that they are getting into because of the bri and other investments which have become white elephants and the number two point is the attitude of the chinese people who have come because he brings all the labor and everything for executing the project the attitude with the locals that the locals have become angry with the condescending and the uh insulting behavior that the chinese have to give a point they made a high speed rail uh, from uh, the kenyan port to nairobi forgetting the name of the kenyan port to nairobi the capital can you believe it sir everybody from the uh, driver to the tt to the coach attendants everybody is chinese Don't tell me you can't have local TTs and local attendants. Even the kitchen pantry car is run by Chinese. There's not a single Kenyan there. That was made and they were sold. That that is yeah. It's called Lamu Port. Lamu Port. Lamu. Lamu Port. And yeah. then it road that rail was made that all the. Uh, commercial activity and trade carriage will be done by the rail now rail is supposed to be the second cheapest cheapest is the sea or the water 
waterways. Next is rail. Then is land. That is your trucks and all. And thereafter, the most expensive is the air. Can you believe it? It is cheaper than the rail to take it by road. Nobody takes the, uh, the trade by the rail. They move it by road. So it's become a white elephant. So these are the issues which are slowly and steadily coming up within Africa, which is making it difficult for it. Next. Now look at the internals. The PLA and the Purges, we have spoken a lot about it and the trust. Now, the latest what is happening is Jhang Yujia is suddenly purging out and sacking or demoting uh, Xi Jinping's protégés. Now, this brings a major issue. Like Li Shangfu, whom he purged, has throughout been a protégé of Xi Jinping. When you purge him of corruption and bring the complete equipment department under scrutiny, equipment department and its previous avatar, the general armaments department, had been run by Chang Yujia, his blood brother. Now, what has happened? I'll just give you the brief on that. We'll first look at PLA. We had touched upon it earlier. The Southern Theatre Commander, in one of our talks, we had touched about it. Yeah, last talk. Last talk. Yes. Jel Wang, uh, Wang Chu Yang oh. has been sacked. Where he has gone, we don't know. Jel Wu Yanan, he has been appointed. Okay. And he is out and out Chang Yu Jia's man. He served with him throughout. The Northern Theatre Commander, General Wang Xiang has been sacked. And General Huang Ming from Central Theatre Commander has been placed there. These happened around end July, August, 1st August. Ke pehle. Their major, like we had said, it didn't come out in the major newspapers. It came out in the provincial newspapers. As far as the Central Theatre Command is concerned, Wang Ming was from Central Theatre Command. No commander has as yet been appointed. The political commissar is running it. <laughs> Which is really a funny thing. Then, the previous to previous Northern Theatre Commander, who is now the ground force commander, General Li Xiaoming, he has been a Chang Yu Jia's protege. When he was removed, and the one who is currently being sacked, General Wang Xiang, was coming, both the staffs got into a fight and there was exchange of fire, I believe. But Chang Yu Jia's hand on him was so strong, Xi Jinping couldn't purge him. He made him the ground force commander. But he placed a political commissar who was his man, General Chin Shu Tong, who has now been purged and he is under uh, investigation. Okay, now this is what has happened in PLA. Now, three theater commanders are with Chang Yuzhia. Only the Eastern Theater commander stays, who is with Xi Jinping, but I doubt he can do anything in Beijing. Because he has got quite a lot on his plate as far as the uh, eastern seaboard is concerned. Western theatre commander similarly placed. He can do nothing in Beijing. He has no troops left. Almost everything has got deployed except for one uh, equivalent of a corps, one group army. That is all that he has left. And he has quite a lot on his plate. Now, is this also a part of Xi Jinping that if I thin out from here, at least if I'm in trouble, I can get something from this man? Because these are the only two people now who are with him. The other three are with. And Central Theatre Command is critical because that is for the defense of Beijing and that is Beijing. the, one with the uh, big bosses of the Communist Party in Beijing. Now let us look at C CMC, which is where would, he would have got scared the maximum. His factum factotum, right from Zhejiang days, the moment he took over as the General Secretary and the President, uh, Chairman of the CMC, a civilian, which has never happened before, he placed him in the director 
general direct as director of the general office the general office coordinates everything and he was also made once the restructuring was done the uh, restructuring and reorganization office also he was to oversee a civilian who has no clue about the pl that chap has been demoted he has been thrown to a central military school that you are the head of that which uh, trains uh, the contract soldiers and officers junior officers when they are just becoming an officer is th been thrown there okay and they brought in from the joint uh, communications op center there was a lieutenant general they brought that person here fang yong nang they brought him there back that this is supposed to be a pla uh, and a uh, military person's appointment not a civilian's appointment but this chap has always been with he was his personal factum factotum the fact that he has been demoted itself is a major issue and the second person their central commission for defense uh, discipline and inspection of the cmc the person who was with she and purging all these people from the time that has been happening he has been demoted and gone sent to a military technical school that will go and oversee that now these are very major purges which have taken place counter purges if i may against xi jinping and of course you have within the ctc your he has been sidelining the contenders so where's the trust the economic slide general shankar has spoken much about i have also spoken with him there is no end in sight is this the push for the fdi that something you can get from indian market because it's easy their banks npas npas have become greater than the stated gdp people are frustrated joblessness no money disappearing savings like we said tang ping ban bai lan to run shui this frustration at demographic decline working age population is sharply declining and soon it will be less than the old people then what are you going to do in one of the uh, talks which i was seeing people from chinese origin outside they are talking they say that as on date today he has only 800 million people so what are you talking that he has 800 million working hands the total population is 800 million oh yeah i agree now in fact uh, thrown out you know what, what i want to put across is this is a very important factor there's this chap called yu fuxian yu fuxian was a you know a chinese he's a chinese guy who ran away from china and he is now in the university of uh, minnesota or uh, wisconsin and he is a demographer and he writes and he says that uh, you know uh, the population of china is not 1.41 billion as per him it is only 1.28 billion and if it is 1.2 and there another chap who says it's only about 800 million they all and if you go by their figures and extrapolate their population they already are more than one third or one uh, uh, chaps for over 65 o buddho ko leke kya karega wo unke liye paisa bhi nahi hai uske paas and i mean Maybe they are in a very bad that. situation and to add to what you said sir they don't get the, they have con, they had initially they used to do the conscription once a year people would now they're doing twice twice a year now what has happened the latest report which is coming out of china written reports they still not getting people they are trying to entice the people who had not joined after the conscript or after first contract had gone back on retirement to come back to serve of he has you could he say he is getting reserves back yes he is getting reserves he back wanting to come back he is wanting the reserves to come back because he is awfully short of technically qualified people who can absorb the new technology yep i agree with you so this Completely. is this window jo main bar bar bolta hu 20 saal ka window hai this is the window you have because he is at this desperate and you have to understand the current what uh, jal shankar had put chinese step back why 
because he is at his weakest so he just wants to pull back to be goody two shoes with you for the time being for the time it's being it's completely temporary yes next sir. so that is why i had put he needs to gain time lot of his fifth columnists inside have been compromised i needs to develop new ones and the new ones are emerging out of the woodwork the using indirect methods to gain traction with him and this point control at least 10 to 15% of our gdp there is a wonderful book written by tom miller he wrote it in 2000 it was published around 2017 18 china's asia dream please read it in it he very categorically mentions and explains how he uses bri and his fdi aim is to slowly step by step incrementally keep increasing the fdi till then he'll be good it to shoes it takes him about 10 to 15 years 20 years that's why i said 20 year window to so that his fdi becomes 10 to 15% of your gdp please remember no country can take a hit of double digit uh, drop in your gdp and that is when he brings the geo economic squeeze to make sure you follow his policies i have always given the classic example of vietnam vietnam 2014 there was a standoff in the haiphong bay on the high sea uh, oil exploration rig with the chinese coast guards vietnamese let loose the government let loose their people who ran amok and burnt all the chinese establishments yes some japanese and korean establishment also got burnt because facially you can't recognize who is a japanese who is a chinese and the script is also similar Jap vietnamese script is very different to that they don't write characters like the koreans uh, Jap japanese and the chinese right at that point in time he was around 8 9% of his gdp cut to 2018 similar standoff in haiphong bay this time the japanese government could not repeat what they had done earlier they went to each their ambassadors in every country went to each of their embassies and other places and begging for help that you must condemn the chinese i was in usi their ambassador had also come to usi the think tanks must also raise by then the chinese had in, investment had increased in those four years the vietnamese had been fools they did the same thing goody two shoes no 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 we'll help this that their in, uh, fdi in uh, vietnam had increased to about 13% of the gdp and came the economic squeeze that if you try to do that we'll pull out the our fdi be careful because he is going to blind side our people no he is already doing it and already these positive narratives on fdi and all that in even a person like your own foreign uh, finance minister has made a statement in the budget speech he is going to revert to high disclose and by this time with you he tried to show his clause he's learnt his lesson now so be very very careful i will not trust him in one word even if i don't wear any rings if i shake hands with him i'm going to count all my fingers <laughs> <laughs> so what is the way ahead? best is you play by his playbook yaar yeah? don't open up your market you say jitna tum hamara tumhara market khologe utna hi market hamara entry milega हम भी एफ डी आई डालेंगे टेल योर कंपनी एफ डी आई मैच इट एंड बाहर से भी मिल सकता है इफ यू आर नॉट गेटिंग फ्रॉम द वेस्ट यार सऊदी अरेबिया यू ए के साथ आपके एग्रीमेंट बने हुए हैं वाई कॉन्ट यू यूज दैट 
you signed agreements theek hai america is part of that agreement america is busy somewhere else but they are next door to us why don't we start doing that way and you have to be careful like i said one full group army is inside tibet uh, no deal till whole group army goes back into barracks yeah Hey, now that you mentioned that there's a group army there, uh, and what a and you do a deal, and what what happens to Tibet? Yeah, do you, you, you leave them? Get out of Tibet, and the two uh, your uh, two divisions of uh, Sinchang military district are with you. Tell them they have to go back to the barracks, to Khotan and Kashgar. They they will not be here. Yeah. How do you how do you keep a check on those? Does Ro have the capacity and capability? Then the others I'm giving is M plus, Nay Mongolia. We should start raising since he is talking about China, uh, Kashmir and other things. Let's start talking about Nay Mongolia. What stops you? Nay Mongolia is Mongolia, yeah. It's not China. Nay M plus, of course. is withdrawal from artificial cc always when you sit for negotiation you must give your extreme position that's when you will get wait to karta hai that's what he says that's what he what, what, you, what you want immediately sorry so i won't talk about patrolling points i'll say you get out get all your army oh, out get back to barracks i want nobody deployed here nobody was deployed there before nobody will be deployed here get lost go back to barracks even the bdr will go back to barracks If you made your camps out here, please vacate all those camps. You can't accept these things. And the main thing that's why I said the group army which has come has to go back to Sichuan. Start extremes, then you can take it forward. I will tell all again. Please read that Thomas Miller's book, Tom Miller's China's Asia Dream. that has not changed he doesn't have a market today anywhere the west and the us markets are getting blocked he is getting worried that these southeast asian markets are getting blocked people are getting worried that he is dumping and they are bringing bringing in rules exactly like the eu to anti dumping to increase the tariffs of chinese goods within southeast asian markets because they own internal companies are getting destroyed that's the route that you have to follow he is not given you any market in there why should i permit him why should i permit him fdi so much that he controls my market don't identify that's where i take what general jay shankar uh, or uh, em jay shankar had said that we must identify the non critical areas that we can give fdi to and in those also i would say let him not go overall whatever fdi he gives not more than 5 6% of your gdp total nothing more than that so that he doesn't have a say in your gdp and then he can't give you a geo economic squeeze you have to protect yourself and make sure that he abides by wto rules he is part of wto it's not a one way traffic he wants to come in here we will have to be he has to give us the market there he can't say my rules don't permit then sorry our rules also should not permit him to come sir that's what i had to say sir. yeah i think uh, you covered a huge ground uh, we are very clear now as to what is the story so far and what are the major issues at stake with general narayanan has uh, explained uh now i just got a message from uh, you know print right i believe that song is resolved completely and that we will be allowed to patrol up to uh, all the petrol points before and uh, that y junction is no more a bottleneck bottleneck y junction we can go to all petrol points they all as for that even demchok is resolved i don't know whether we'll be able to go to chardingla uh, chardingla or not 
but these are issues which you know the print the, the you know it's come out in the press but let's wait for the actual black and white uh, thing and then we'll analyze it further but the main thing which we have put across today is what are the issues involved on ground and what are the dangers in the whole situation okay now this is going to be a long session uh, today we're going to take some time because i think this is a fundamental session based on which uh, further sessions will build so the first thing the, the 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 world is out that all this is being done so that uh xi jinping and prime minister modi can have a meet in brics and the whole idea is to get brics through so your yeah, and your views on that and then i will also put in my two bits worth oh yes sir basically india and russia have negated his first he was talking global times were yapping uh, dozen to a million gazillion times about brics currency that they have said no common currency they have said no even of uh, uh, equivalent to swift is not yet in place and uh, putin was very clear that it's too early so at best uh, what they were talking of what uh, hints was coming from russia and india was local currency uh, doing trade in local currency of uh, which i don't think the chinese would be very happy with because a lot of countries don't like his yuan yeah he imposes on them but they don't like yuan he was hoping that somebody from uh, latin america may come but argentina has withdrawn its application pakistan is bec- it's becoming a no no as far as uh, brics is india's concern so uh, he i think would be looking more on the sidelines to because of this kind of uh, build up that is coming up that fdi 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 of trying to get into a market through fdis yeah i i completely agree with you if i have to add a point is that look we have to understand without india brics is a no go okay and the, in the last meet of brics we said no global development initiative no gci all that nonsense so you know he step taken one step back the danger is will we take will he take two steps forward in brics in the in the on the sidelines of brics while we are concentrating on fdi the things could be coming somewhere else so that is something which we have to see like what jal narayan said trust mat karo usko trust out of question okay so that's as far as brics is concerned what do you think is russia's hand in all this from a brics yeah, perspective russia, and russia russia i think is more and more now Uh, coming around to the point that between china and india india is more trustworthy and since india has a voice across both sides china had actually speaking like i always tell a lot of people that okay if you are not very keen on something you don't like a person don't cut him off you never know at what point in time you might need something something from him so don't keep quiet don't build relations but don't shut him out completely same is the case in relations between in international relations between countries if you're not okay with the government don't break away from the people don't break away from the people unfortunately in both the wars here conflict here whether it be ukraine or it be gaza china has been found to be favoring only a particular side yeah yeah in fact there is there is news that some chinese chaps were you know killed in lebanon in an underground tunnel as part of a strike yeah so now the issue comes about is now i'm sure the uh, what we call the uh, war fatigue would have all would slowly be coming in europe has already got its war fatigue and i'm sure the war fatigue is also coming in in russia 
Hey, I'll let me add. Now that you, who only, yeah, he's already, he's already said that only Prime Minister Modi can help us Modi, take, you know, because yeah. he, ours is the only country. I, I won't say he can Prime trust. Minister Modi because since he is the Prime Minister today, today ours is the only country which has good relations across the conflict. Everyone. With everyone. Right, sir. So, similarly, at some point in time, when the war fatigue sets in, in the Middle East, who is the country where yeah. all sides will feel comfortable with? You. So, yeah, I agree with you. And then he finds that uh, you have not gone down the uh, unethical way in which the Chinese started copying their weapons. You had your chance in this two years in the war. But you spoke to him, discussed with him, took his okay, and only then you are doing the like uh, refurbishing and creating the T93 uh, Type 3 and the refurbishing of your SUS, refurbishing of your naval uh, fleet, everything with his concurrence and working with them. You didn't s start off straight away saying, like your MRO also, you're trying to do for the region. You're taking him into confidence and saying... Yeah, you're taking me into board. In fact, part of he he wants part of your MRO. Yes. He wants part of your MRO. He wants MRO. Which you're ready MRO. To he's not taking it yes. from the Chinese. Which yes. tells you the degree of trust that he also has with, less with the Chinese. Now, the yeah. Chinese are worried they are today at the weakest. Yes, the US would be worried with this that the RIC, which the Russians are very keen to restart, if the RIC happens, then uh, it becomes a major issue for them. Because if you're all the while talking about that in, uh, World Bank and IMF, that the global economy depends on India. And if India is not with them, then they have a problem. A problem. Yeah. Right? Now, you are the happiest if this happens. I, I have my rationale for that. Because the conflict zone, when we do the net assessment, we always keep conflict zones. If it is hypothetical, if the RIC comes about, then most of Asia falls in with you. The lone uh, interloper is Pakistan. Where will he go? He can't go anywhere. Right, sir. Most yeah. of the Asia and falls with you. Then the conflict zone goes to the Pacific Atlantic stroke Mediterranean. Relatively, Relatively, I'm saying, Indian Ocean becomes a zone of peace and you get that peace uh, dividend which you never had in your life. Yeah. But, right? but, but, but provided... Hypothetical, hypothetical. Chinese will not agree today. Yeah, to that. The trust factor in China is not there. Yes, because they right? are at the weakest. R and if today weakest. it happens, they will not have that say. Yeah, so RIC, is, as it is, they are regretting with BRICS. Yes. So, right. So, you know, the, the they thought they can get away with BRICS. They're not able to get away with BRICS. So they don't want to get into RIC and strengthen the Russia-India uh, partnership. And they become a junior partner in this whole deal. It's very uncomfortable for them. And then they lose the Chinese dream. You see, that's the most important thing. You know, at the end of the day, we must remember Xi Jinping has got still some power. His wings might be clipped. He's still the tallest leader in China. He's not going to let go in a hurry. Not only that, sir. The US and the West for the medium and low tech are still heavily dependent on China. Heavily dependent on China. Okay. You go to China, you go to USA to any supermarket or any store, the only thing which you see is bloody Chinese made items. So everything, even bloody zips come from China. Okay. That's the level of dependence. So we'll leave that. So we we touched upon RIC. So there's an issue there. We have touched upon BRICS. Let's talk of USA. Let's talk of our strategic partnership with USA. Vis-a-vis -vis what is happening in India, Canada, and this. So suddenly the you yeah. suddenly find the change. I am waiting to see the change in tone and tenor in USA. the US. In USA. USA. Because it's very easy to throw that chap Justin Trudeau under the bus. Under the bus. He'll go See, under the bus. That's the, I'm, sure they will under the tell, bus. I'm sure they will talk to UK and the governor general out there is going to call for elections and that is the end of Trudeau. 
and they swing it so that they get polier person in place and trudo goes under the bus and that's the end of story as far as, and those rcmp guys and others he'll tell them you can sort them out at your level what all they have done crap and so a lot of these higher level people in the governance will be going under the bus because he he can't afford to lose you yeah so there are so that's the thing the next thing is we we'll, we we have to re- now really seriously think about what do we do with tibet yes the tibet question is something which we need really have to think about the whole story right it's very and, very uh, critical that's why i was saying very critical get out, get out of tibet. first thing is get that group army out of tibet tibet because right if they, if it doesn't and, get out of tibet uh, he, he may use that group army to suppress people in tibet so that group army has yeah. to get out okay now uh, another point i want to touch on uh is that is he looking at getting out of the two front situation in which he is in the interim i'm sure he would be and not only a two front situation also that he he might be working with the pap i really don't know and uh, might be easing the load on the western theater commander so that he can come to his assistance if push comes to shove and he has a standoff with changjuje then what does he do yeah Because so the two there are just major changes in the cmc that's a slap on the face to xi jinping xi jinping right so there are major, may, may many layers in this whole story uh, let me uh, okay let me put it i, I want to i'll take one comment it's a comment but i would like you to comment on it and you know we can discuss this he says General Raj Shukla, Rakesh Shukla, and Narsimhan have Sharma. different views on China from these two. Who is it? Rakesh Sharma no, no, have no, no. Nars- be Rakesh we have no. We know Rakesh. Rakesh. Oh, that's Rakesh okay. Sharma. That's okay. We know that. We know that they have different views. Okay, they could have completely different views from us, and I expect them to have. I have no doubt about it. They have their own way of studying. We have our own way of studying. We are very clear. but what i am clear which i want to tell all of you who are seeing this show is that whatever we have predicted about china over the past 3 to 4 years has come true i mean let's be very clear i am i am no making no boast we been doing this show either together or with others and we been talking a lot about china and whatever we have said has come true and that whatever we have said is based on our analysis based on our reading of china daily reading of china and you know why reading of china themselves. by the chinese chinese themselves what the chinese have yeah, written about themselves yeah i you will be surprised i have not read a western book on china i have not read the only two sources of information for me about china is what i have seen china across the lac which i have served all over the countryside and what i have read from chinese sources all western readings are corroborative so we are looking at it completely from a perspective so those generals with due deference to them and you know uh, the thing they give you a alternate view point and you must listen to it we also listen to it but we are not convinced by them so far okay so that is what i thought i will uh, put across to all of you so what we have done today is put across the issues on ground what are the issues which are affected we don't know what's in fine print let that come out we'll analyze it we'll come out and it's so far a one sided story the chinese side have not come out with it okay we have not seen reactions from china I mean, USA. We are not seeing reaction from uh, Russia. Uh, all this, and uh, so let's wait. I would say let's wait. Based on how things swing and all that, we'll come back to you in a day or two. Uh, with this, uh, anything else to add, uh, Rajiv? No. Otherwise, we'll close the no. session. Thank, thank you. Sir. Right. Thanks a lot to everyone who's attended. Sorry, I'm not taking your questions because it's too premature to take any question at this point of time. 
This is the initial analysis. In-depth analysis, point by point, we'll do as uh, we you know go along. And if something significant happens tomorrow, we'll get back to you tomorrow or day after. We'll see how it, the whole thing goes. Right? Thanks and good evening and jai to all of you.